was the year 155 AD, and in the amphitheater in the ancient city of Smyrna, the local bishop, Bishop Polycarp, was being burned at the stake for refusing to state his allegiance to Caesar, the emperor of Rome. Now, two interesting things about this bishop and martyr are, first, he is the one that's given credit for writing the before meal prayer that all of us know and say each and every day we sit down before we eat our meal. And second, this saint is the first saint that the church kept some relics of for veneration rather than burying all of his remains at the time of his death. The practice of venerating relics is an ancient one that seemingly begins with St. Polycarp. It may seem strange that Christianity should attach veneration to body parts of the faithful departed, but in a religion as spiritually centered as Christianity, the remains of some of the faithful departed are surrounded with special care and veneration. This is because the mortal remains of the deceased are associated in some manner with the holiness of their souls that await reunion with their bodies in the resurrection. Now this practice follows the example given to us in the Bible. For instance, we know that Elisha the prophet, when he had died, his bones had been used to touch that of a person who had died, and that man was raised back to life. Also in scripture, there were instances given where St. Paul's handkerchiefs were used in order to touch some of those who were sick, and it brought healing to them in their life. These two stories from scripture give credence then to the practice of the church, using relics of saints at times when some of her members may be looking for timely help or healing. Now a relic is a piece of the body of a saint, or it could be an item that the saint owned, or something that the saint used in his life, or it's an object which was later touched at the tomb of that saint. The word relic comes from the Latin word relinquo, which means remains, or left behind. In the case of St. Polycarp, following his martyrdom at the stake, the authorities at that time wanted to prevent the Christian community from taking possession of his body in the hopes of squashing any possible worshipping of him as a martyr. The Christian community, however, was able to get possession of some of his remains and thus began a practice of venerating this holy, saintly man. By the 4th and 5th centuries of the church, the fathers of the church took up the theme of reverence that should be paid to the sacred relics of all saints. And by the 1100s, relics were being venerated in churches and shrines which attracted numerous pilgrims. One particular practice that developed were that altars at the time of their consecration by the bishop were to have inserted a relic of a saint, preferably a martyr, which was then kissed by the priest as he began to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Even today, many of the altars of our churches possess relics of one of the saints in heaven. As we give special focus and attention during this month of November to all those who died before us marked with the sign of faith, it's good for us to recall this traditional practice of venerating the relics of our saints. It reminds us of our ties to them in heaven and their healing power and help that can come to us through their intercessory power with God.